welcome back friends in this session we will learn indirect elisa that is indirect enzyme linked immunosorbent assay indirect elisa is used to detect and quantify the antibodies present in the sample popularly the technique is used to detect anti hiv antibodies present in the patient serum See whenever any person is infected with the virus or bacteria or any other kind of infectious agent his body produces antibodies against it so if the person is infected with hiv his body is going to produce anti hiv antibodies against it and these antibodies can be detected in the serum of that person by indirect elisa let us assume we have a serum sample and we want to check the presence and quantify anti a antibodies in it so if we want to do this using indirect elisa we need some basic things first is a antigen itself so we need the antigen complementary to the antibody to be detected so if you want to detect anti hiv antibodies in the sample you will need hiv antigen in this case we want to detect the presence of anti a antibodies and therefore we are using the a antigen right the next and very important requirement is enzyme linked secondary antibody this antibody has two properties first it is secondary antibody why this antibody is called as secondary because it binds to the antibodies not the antigens and in this case in the case of indirect elisa it is going to bind the antibodies present in the sample like this so any antibody that binds to the another antibody is called as secondary antibody another property these antibodies are connected or conjugated with enzymes like alkaline phosphatase horse radish peroxidase and beta galactosidase all these enzymes have a common property that is they have a chromogenic substrate means whenever this enzyme act upon their uh, substrate a colored product is formed for example in case of horse radish peroxidase uh, it acts on its substrate called as tetramethyl benzidine whenever horse radish peroxidase acts on this substrate a blue colored product is formed which can be easily visualized by eyes and its concentration can also be detected with the help of spectrophotometer another main requirement is the micro titer plate it is a small plate having many small wells and generally 96 and therefore it is also called as 96 well plate each small well is called as micro titer well apart from this basic requirements we will need coating buffer the coating buffer is required to coat the antigen to attach the antigen to the micro titer well next is washing buffer washing buffer is required to wash and to remove the unbound material from the well and last is the sulfuric acid or the phosphoric acid so this kind of acids are used to stop the enzyme catalyzed reactions So let us see the actual protocol for indirect ELISA. So what you are looking at now is the small micro titer well of micro titer plate. In the first step this micro titer well is coated with A antigen. Remember we want to detect the presence of anti A antibodies in the sample. That's why we are coating A antigen in the micro titer well. This coating or binding is initiated with the help of coating buffer. This coating buffer helps to bind antigens so firmly to the well that they cannot be removed even by washing or even by tapping. After coating of antigen to the well in the next step this sample is added to the well. Now what will happen this sample really contains the anti A antibodies. Of course the anti a antibodies are going to bind the antigens yes because they are complementary to the each other right but sample may contain other antibodies also and even the concentration of a antibodies may be higher than the antigen so these excess antibodies 
will remain unbound so in the next step we have to remove this unbound any any kind of unbound antibodies with the help of washing buffer and this washing is done for at least three times so situation will be like this after washing there will be a well coated with the antigens and the antibodies from the sample they are bound to the that is anti a antibodies they are bound to the antigens but what if the sample don't contains the antibodies the specific anti a antibodies so let us assume this situation also so let me draw here a well a microtiter well coated with the a antigens and then we will add the sample but with no specific no anti a antibodies so after washing since there are no specific antibodies the antigens will be free like this after this the main reagent of elisa test is added to the well and it is the enzyme linked secondary antibody okay so as we have discussed earlier this enzyme linked secondary antibody is specific to the antibodies only they binds to the antibodies not the antigen so if there are antibodies present in the sample this secondary enzyme linked antibodies will bind to them like this but if sample don't contain the antibodies like in this case there are no space to bind the secondary enzyme linked antibodies they will remain unbound like this so in this case the enzyme linked antibodies are bound to the antibodies present in the sample and in the second case the enzyme linked antibodies are unbound in the next step the wells are again washed with the help of washing buffer so tell me what will happen this time yes so in the first case the antibodies are bound so they will not be removed by washing and in the second case the enzyme linked antibodies are unbound so that's why they will be removed from the well like this correct so in the next step the chromogenic substrate is added to the well so what is chromogenic substrate so as we have discussed earlier this substrate they are get converted into the colored product when their enzyme acts upon it so in the first well there are enzyme linked antibodies that means there are the enzymes so when substrate is added these enzymes will convert the substrate into the colored product like this so color will appear in this well correct so in the second case there are no enzyme linked antibodies means there are no enzyme molecule in this well so substrate will remain substrate because there are no enzymes so no color change so if color change occur it indicates there are enzymes means there are enzyme linked antibody and presence of enzyme linked antibody indicates the presence of antibody in the sample so the interpretation is very simple if color appears in the well it means there are antibodies present in the sample so in this case there are anti a antibodies present in the sample and if color don't appear means there are no anti a antibodies in the sample so in this way the indirect elisa is interpreted the intensity of color also tells about the concentration of the antibody so after adding the substrate for example in case of horse radish peroxidase when its substrate tmb is added the blue color is formed and this reaction is then stopped by addition of acid so either phosphoric acid or sulfuric acid so acid converts the blue color into the yellow one and the intensity of yellow color tells us means the absorption of the yellow color tells us about the concentration of antibodies present in the sample so indirect elisa is used in the both way it can used to just detect the presence of antibodies or to quantify them